How you doing? Oh, it's all, it's past seven thirty. I gotta just wait till they get. <coughs> Where'd you guys stay? Virtually nothing, but I like it. You're in good company, guys. Oh, a little bit here. Did they have the butterfly house open and stuff like that, or? Well, young kids, I mean, it's mystified when all of a sudden, I know in the summer you walk in and you're covered in butterflies. <laughs> Well, I've got a lot of work to Guys, ready? Oh, are you ready, Jen? No, I'm not sure. I have a terrible time putting my mic on. Uh, especially on a golf shirt. Uh -huh. Yeah. That time? It usually gets a pretty good price. Is it? What time is it? Oh, it's one nine. You have oh, what time? Did you go to the port <laughs> on Mackinac Island? I got the. Uh, Two weeks ago, I'm being smart. Two weeks ago, I went with Mike Sisolo, so I, I had plaid pants. Oh, I saw that. Right. Oh, that's right. You were here. You were here. Right. Good evening. Today is May 16th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Okay. It is 7:33, I believe. Would you please stand for the opening prayer and the pledge of allegiance? Lord, we're meeting here tonight to conduct matters of business. Guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that these affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for, be, for being the source of our guidance tonight. Amen. Amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Roll call, please. Lorraine? Here. Shoemaker? Present. Mathis? Here. Karuka's present. Kessler? Here. Gopal? Here. Tucker? Present. You have full board. To the members of tonight's audience, this program is televised. You can see in the four corners the cameras. It will be on channel 191 if you have charter communications. It will start on Thursday, usually starts at 8 in the morning, noon, 4, and it'll go on for like the next two weeks. Sometimes it's not exactly at the same time, but it's there because maybe there's something, a school activity or something that's going on on television. So if you want to come up and speak, you're welcome to come up. I, I need you to come up to the podium, but you don't have, you can give your name, but you don't have to give your address. <clears throat> Approval of tonight's agenda. Are there any requests to amend tonight's agenda? A motion is in order to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Support. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Is motion is carried. Presentation. In the audience is Vince Lorraine of Southern Lakes Park Rec. And he's here to um, present the annual, his annual report in regards to Southern Lakes and Recreation. I think Vince Lorraine's down here, right here. Said Vince I Lorraine. said Vince, oh, Vince, <laughs> did oh, you hear me say present. that? Vince. <laughs> you know, I, I guess I've been very Oh, good, all right, sure it's, I'm, this, I'm gonna <laughs> introduce you. Right. This is Vince <laughs> Perry. this is Vince Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> we can switch if you like. No, I'll let you go. Um, thank you, uh, Bonnie, for inviting me um, and the board. And uh, everyone in the audience. I have to say I appreciate Tom putting me early on. I'm usually I'm at the end of the agenda. No, we usually do. I was at Lake, I was telling this lady here, I was at Lake Fenton a week ago and there were about 80 people in there. I mean, the place was packed up at the middle school. And I thought, wow, there's a lot of people here. This is cool. A lot more of the public will get to see the, see the presentation. And they got done with all the kids stuff and, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I turned around, there was one person left. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was a teacher. <laughs> so I appreciate you putting me on early. Um, 
what I'm doing is that this is for, for the 2015 year. It does have statistical data in it and um, some feel-good stuff in there, too. So, uh, um, as you know, we've been around for... I don't have a clicker, so I have to look at Tom. Um, as you know, our, our mission is to establish, maintain, and operate a system of parks, recreation, facilities, and programs. These are four of our uh, gymnastics instructors uh, who operate out of the Linden uh, out of Hyatt Elementary. Now, this is our current board of commissioners. Um, as you know, our board is made up of two members of each, uh, two uh, appointed members from each municipality, City of Fenton, City of Linden, and Fenton Township. Uh, they uh, are on the board for three-year terms, and they are um, not consecutive, so we never lose all six of our people at the same time. We do have Bob Krug, who is, who is your clerk from Fenton Township, and then Sean Shoemaker uh, is the board of trustees. I do have, there's one correction on there. Um, Pat Lockwood is forcing me to tell everybody I made a mistake. She's actually Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Fenton. <laughs> Uh, this is a little bit harder to see. It's our organizational chart. You can see we are governed by a board of commissioners. We meet annually, uh, and by law we have to meet uh, 12 times a year. And underneath me you can see all the various program directors and program administrators. Most people don't realize this, but um, we have uh, uh, four full-time uh, administrators, but we actually have about 135 people who work for us or contractors or part-time program directors. And uh, those four people manage all of those, uh, all of those contractors and, and programmers, coaches and uh, people like that. Um, as you know, our, we were established in 2000 of November. We operate on a 0.4 mil. It's rolled back to 3, 0.3726, and it's been stuck there for about four years. So we haven't seen a whole lot of uh, growth. Here um, is a slide. It's, it shows where the property tax comes from and the amount that it, that it comes from from each municipality. You see the lion's share of that uh, for the formula that's out there currently that we operate on. About 63% comes from Fenton Township. Uh, and then you have the rest of that divided between Fenton City and Linden City. Linden varies between 11, excuse me, 11 and 13 percent. This is our property tax revenue sheet. You can see in 2001 we brought in about $294,000 in the millage, and that year we brought in about $60,000 in revenue from new programming that we developed. You can see in about 09, 08, we were up around 486. And then the crash came. And currently, um, we're in 2015, we we're about $380,000. And that would put us somewhere between back to 04, 05 funding levels. And what happened during that time period, um, we had to let uh, four staff people um, go. And everybody, and I don't have to tell you guys about crashes, everybody felt it in government. It, this shows revenue trends. Even when we started to crash in 08 in terms of the millage and the dollars that came in from that, we still kept driving programming up. And you can see from 01 where we were about $60,000 to uh, 15, we were about 720,000, somewhere in that area. And programming is what drives the organization. So what has happened is the, the millage used to be a lot larger, but the program development over the last 15 years is flip-flop everything, which is good for us. You can see our admin costs have, you know, gone down and our programming <coughs> revenues have gone up. Okay. Expenses, uh, you shouldn't be surprised by this. Expenses in, in administrative uh, expenses have gone down and revenues in, ex in uh, programming have gone up and they basically follow each other. Our fund equity growth, as elected board members, you know, your auditors want you to keep 15 to 20 percent in your fund operating dollars just in case you have an emergency or you have to close the doors of your organization. We really, we were going good until about 08, 09, and then 
things happened and <coughs> we had to adjust our wheels and then the 11th we got back on track and our auditors are really pushing us to, for us to be in the low 20s in terms of 20 20 21 of our total operating dollars from one year so if you're you have a million dollar uh, budget they want you to have about 20 percent of that or 200 210 thousand uh, the LOCI Center, as a lot of you know, um, we are part of the interlocal agreement, and since 2000, we have been contributing 19% of the millage to LOCI. And at the high point in about 08, 09, um, it was about $90,000, just over 89000 And to date, we have provided them with uh, $1,133,000 and some change. And we're really glad about that. We have a really good relationship with LOCI. They are providing, as you know, senior recreation programming, um, facilities, activities, and we're proud of that relationship. We think that, and it's a one of a kind in this county. There's no other Parks and Recreation Department that has a permanent millage, operating millage like we do, that provides money to a senior center. So we should be proud of that. Uh, one of the things, Southern Lakes Parks and Recreation cannot exist without community <coughs> relationships. And I'm not going to go through all those and read, read every one, but we need those to thrive because one of our continued challenges is um, we don't have a home. And we're working on that strongly, but that takes a lot of money. And so what we have to do is, and you can see from the brochure, and you'll see here on a few other slides, we have to work in the Fenton schools, Linden schools, uh, Lake Fenton schools. We work in churches, municipalities, parks, everywhere we can in order to provide our programs. So relationships come first. Okay. Uh, these are just a few of the community events we run. I think everybody knows we run farmers markets, uh, Linden markets in conjunction with the municipality. Uh, the Back to the Bricks programs, uh, the Fenton concerts and the Linden music by the mills. We really, um, our program is, is youth uh, driven. We had about just over 5,000 uh, uh, youth registered in our programs in 2015 and 758 program registrations. And then interesting statistics about athletics. About the age of 13 and 14, approximately 75% of all kids drop out of organized sports. Okay, And teens are really hard for us to nail too. One of the things we're real proud of is the driver's training program that we offer. We have about 280, 290 <coughs> kids a year in that, and they're all teens, and we really love that connective tissue with the teens. Uh, they are a hard group to find. You know, they start um, uh, wanting to drive, wanting to find a job, get other interests. They get cut from teens, that kind of thing. So they sort of drop out, and uh, that's one way that we connect. Uh, we offer um, 167 programs uh, for adults. That would be over the age of 18, 21, I suppose you could say. And we have had about 681 people participate in those programs. Now that doesn't include your concerts, your markets, your back to the bricks. You saw those numbers. These are just numbers that we can <coughs> um, These are our special event highlights. We have a number of them we run around. Um, the communities in different areas. We just, uh, three weeks ago, um, some of you may have gone to see nieces, uh, nep nephews, uh, daughters at the uh, Lake Fenton. Uh, we do our annual dance recital there. And we generally have about 2,000 people that go to that event. Uh, we do do customer satisfaction surveys. Uh, some of this is, gets a little bit starchy. We use something called Survey Monkey. And we do it after every program. Um, we still, the driving force behind how people get our information is our brochure. But as we were chatting here um, uh, about the Tri-County and how uh, it still goes through the Tri-County, but we were talking about how it's online, too. And so we're trying to find a way to decipher in our customer questions. <coughs> are they getting the brochure by going online, or are they getting it through the Tri-County Times? Are the kids getting it through the schools? Are you picking it up at the library? Where are you getting it? Because we, we flood the community with 
just about 27,000 brochures three times a year. And we have different levels of how we do that. Your kids, if you have kids in school, they may actually bring two home. Uh, participant residency, um, you can see it goes from Fenton Township, which you would expect to, to have the most people in it because you have the highest population. And generally, those things follow each other. All the way down to Davison, which is, you know, less than a percent. And if you look at Davison, Deerfield, uh, Heartland, Burton, Gaines, those kinds of places, we have some programs that have regional attraction. Uh, our AAU volleyball program is only one of three in the county. Uh, the competitive swim program is only one of two in the greater county area. And so when those, for the higher level competition things, like our uh, gymnastics program, uh, there aren't a lot of those around, and so people will tend to drive further for those. This is, um, we do uh, some real detail to find out where we are. And like I said, uh, the vast majority of everything we run runs in the school districts. Uh, the majority because of the pool and uh, the other facilities that Fenton has, roughly about half of it goes on there. Uh, Lake Fenton Schools, we got about 9%, and that's because of the dance studio. Uh, the community center, we run a lot of enrichment <coughs> programs there and a few special events. The gymnastics program uh, in Linden and Hyatt Elementary is, um, takes another about 25%, 26%, and then the other is parks, uh, churches, things like that. This is what we call our program star. Um, uh, sheet or plate. Um, you can see dance, swim, driver's education, AU volleyball, and gymnastics. Those um, run year-round and they have um, really high numbers in them, so we sort of call them our stars. Okay, um, you know, we were talking about our not having a home for us. Uh, where you run a program does matter. And this is just one snapshot of three winter programs in, one, in different locations. And I'll just start with the left um, section there. Uh, if you look at Gym Stars, uh, the majority of the people come from the Linden area, Byron area. You go to, and that's because it's located in Linden. You go to Swim, uh, which is Fenton Schools, you'll see that it's higher there for Swim, which is the yellow line. And then the blue line, in the third category is the dance uh, dance studio, and that's dance located dance. in Lake Fenton. So you can see location does matter. But the good thing about this is we operate inside a 36 square mile area, which is basically your your perimeter boundary of the township. Take you eh, eight nine minutes on a busy day to get anywhere mm -hmm. in the area, and that's sort of the regional view we like to see of Southern Lake is that you only have to drive about you know, seven, eight, ten minutes tops on a bad day to get to something to go to. And, that, and that's good. Uh, not all the programs we offer run. I know that my board members wish every one of them ran, but you know, we're not perfect. And, uh, but these are a lot of the ones that we've started. Now, the one that is really uh, going well is um, uh, lacrosse. I don't play it, but I, I know how to spell <laughs> it. It is going. It. Um, <laughs> we had about 10, 12 kids in the last year. We're up to enough kids now, around 35, somewhere in that area, to actually have teams go out and play in other leagues. And so we're getting to that scrimmage game playing. And eventually, we hope to have our own in-house league. So we're, we're pleased with that, for sure. Uh, these are some upcoming events we've got going on. Um, the Mother Sun Dance. Uh, already ran. Uh, the spring dance recital was just at Lake Fenton. And then you look down through the list. The one thing we have taken on um, new is the Tour de Lac. It is a bike tour <coughs> around the greater Fenton Byron area. It goes out pretty far. The longest ride is about 62 miles. And that was ran for a number of years as a benefit uh, for a local family's child who passed away. They were making donations to U of M. Uh, for all the help they had. It didn't run in 14 or 15, I believe, and now we've picked it up from the Tour de Lac people. And uh, it, it's just another way for us to offer uh, a different kind of program. It's not a race, it's just a, a family-oriented tour. 
And that's it. Um, but again, the one thing I would emphasize, um, the, the one, our, our number one goal is to, you know, it's been 15 and a half years now, we are working on finding a home. Mm -hmm. We've moved quite a bit, but uh, we know we need a home. And, and how big, I mean, when you're talking a structure? Well, Madam Supervisor, we had a study done a few years ago, and uh, for what we find in the sky, we need about, Sean was on the committee with me, we need about $22 million, <laughs> which is far-fetched. We realized that, but we wanted to see, you know, something reasonable. We need about five to 7,000 square feet for an administrative office, that kind of thing. And uh, I'm glad you asked that question. The, uh, the study we had done told us that ideally, if we could stay within uh, a one mile radius of the Silver Lake area, a little bit north of there, uh, the Parkway and 23. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it's service wise, um, that is where a lot of people congregate. And it would be better, for instance, we wouldn't want to be on the far side of Linden or all the way up, no. tucked up in a corner northeast quadrant of our service area. That wouldn't make the customer service sense, if you wish. So somewhere in that concentric circle, no matter whose property it's on, mm -hmm. is, is the best area for us, because then you only have about two to three miles to drive to get to our office. It may not be as important as it used to be, because about 34 to 36 percent of our people um, register online. Really? And that is something we've been trying to do. Yeah, we'd like to see it over 50%. Vince, you were saying driver's training. Does Southern Lakes do the boat lace? I mean, yeah, yeah. because we, my grandson did it online. Yeah, we, we do that. Um, we have that big program. And then in the fall, we work with the DNR um, on uh, hunter safety. Really? Yeah, those programs are always packed. They're really hard. If you have kids who want to get them, you have to get them now because mm -hmm. we are, we're always adding additional sessions. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions from any of the board members? You get to know from Bob and I. I was just going to say, is Sean or Bob, yeah, do you? These are easy questions. <laughs> you want us to bring up the hard ones? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just thought it I'd offer. Any questions at all? I'm going to open it up to the public, and if you have any questions for Mr. Paris, please feel free, free to ask him. So I'm, I have a question. So the facility, I mean, some of the things that you that you want to offer would probably be unreasonable, like swimming or whatever. I mean, you would just mm -hmm. still use the Fenton High School. But, so in your vision for a facility, what would you offer in a facility other than administrative offices? I think realistically that's what we're looking at. Just that. Yeah, if we had a, you know, if we had a multi-purpose room like this, that would be good for, you know, it could generate revenues or something like that for a rental or something like that. But most, mostly, it is to get our staff. Uh, our staff has only been together two times in 15 years because we just don't have enough room. I actually, wow. my office is in the center of training people, and my registration and other administrators are in the community. So you're just trying to get the people that actually run the organization together. Yeah, we, we feel you would like still put the programs out to where they... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that the $22 million thing, if anybody's going to press here, strike that. That was just a high in the eye <laughs> study we had done mm -hmm. a few years ago, and we know it's not realistic. Right. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? When you said 15 years ago... Does, doesn't it go farther than that 15 years ago? Well, when the millage, millage was passed in November of 2000. I was brought on in May of 01. Okay, so because I'm it went back into the in the 90s and 80s. Well, when you were working well, on community, it, 96, 96, 96, when your committee was together. So, yeah, you're mm -hmm. fair enough, 20, 21 mm -hmm. years in the making, yeah. I don't know the gentleman's name. He was a VFW member who started it. I don't know. I, you know, we, I have history a lot of people claiming to be the author of Southern. <laughs> <laughs> Get them up for $22 yeah. million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very, very much. Right, I know, you. I appreciate it. We've used, my family members have used it a lot. I appreciate it. I mm -hmm. can't wait to see myself on TV. I've never had a mugshot done before. So. <laughs> thank you very much. You're, You're welcome. Bye-bye. Right. We'll have the hard questions later this month. Right. Thank you. And Thanks, Vince. <coughs>
Sean, can you bring that screen up so we can watch the time? See what? Perfect. All right, yeah. including the packet of the minutes. Meeting. Are there any corrections or revisions for these min minute meetings? Yes, sir, but we don't yeah. know yeah. what the word is. All right. I'll tell him about later. The, the minutes, about the Friday. meeting minutes stand approved as amended by Mr. Tucker on the missing word. Right? Yes. Okay. I'll let him know. Expenditures. Are there any questions regarding any of the expenditures that are in front of you? What's the, uh, the new one? I, yes. I, a, thanks for circulating that. That was. Great. All right. This what, one. What, what's the story with that? All right. I, um, the one that we just got for 7777 some cents was a refund from a Mr. Smacka who was going to build a home eight years ago and he had put that amount of money down, it never got refunded. So we found it and he had called and asked and, and we had the staff research it. And um, so today when they brought this to me, I said, put this, I mean, we, we're not gonna make that man wait another two weeks. We definitely owe it to him. <laughs> building permit building. and tap? <coughs> building, uh, building and sewer tap. In, uh, and we refund those if they don't use them? <coughs> not, not necessarily on, on this one. Tom, give me an update on that. Because he's right, we don't. But on this one, we did. Well, he never built. So he, he did forfeit his, his deposit wow. on his building permit. Uh, but the <coughs> permit fee itself... <laughs> and, the, and the connection fee you are refundable. Now, if, if, if he, had, he was building another house, if he told us early enough, we would have just applied that to the new permit. He'd already paid for the new permits. And uh -oh. they said, oh, by the way, I never got my money back <coughs> years ago on this one. But that's policy is if you, you build, all you lose is the deposit? If you, right. I'm sorry, if, if, you, if, 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 if you don't build. If you don't start and yeah. withdraw, then, yeah, you can get the money back other than the deposit. See, he had a building permit of $1,621, sewer inspection fees of $150, and sewer connection fees of 6000 So it came to that amount of money. So whoever goes to that property next will pay tap fee at current. Right. And right now, he, I mean, he is going to be building in a different location, but not at this present time. And that was the policy of the township. That's one you don't see real often. No. No, not at all. Are there any other questions regarding any of these invoices? All right. A motion is in order to um, approve the expenditures totaling $370,742.85. I added that $7,000 some dollars onto your bill. Do I have a motion? Wait, tell me the number again. Um, Three hundred and seventy thousand seven hundred and forty-two dollars and eighty-five cents. So moved. Support. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. I vote yes. Mathis. Yes. Kessler. Yes. Shoemaker. Yes. Gopal. Yes. Tucker. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. Motion passes. Public hearings. <coughs> none. Reports. Are there any committee reports to be made to the board? All right, communications, none. Adoption of ordinances. This is a rezoning, and it is rezoning of R16001. It's amendment to the PUD condition, Gables of North Shore, Kevin Keels, parcel 0611, 626-018. This is the second reading. We did this last two weeks ago. Um, one of the existing conditions states that all development must be completed in three years of the adoption of the previous amendment. That three-year period has expired, so the conditions must be further revised to allow the final unit to be um, constructed. 
The proposed amendment would require that all development would be completed within one year of the effective date of this amendment. The Planning Commission has conducted a public hearing on the proposed amendment and has recommended approval. For the people in the audience, Gables of North Shore, as you drove in on Bowles, and you see the fire department on your left-hand side, as you make that little curve on the right-hand side, you see, I believe there's four beautiful colored uh, condos. And then there's a, uh, one large lawn. And then um, Mr. Kills is going to be putting it right there. So that's Gables of North Shore, and his address will be Bowles. Do I have any board discussion? If not, I need a motion to adopt an amendment to ordinance number 736 to revise the PUD conditions for the previously approved PUD development as presented. So Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Shoemaker? Yes. Gopal? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Kessler? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Mathis? Yes. Somebody should vote no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no Krug says yes. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. I'm glad to see you're going to build there. It's going to be very nice. Uh, rezoning. We're going to come into another rezoning. This is R16002. Donald L. Doyle. Part of parcel 0624-200-027. This is located uh, adjacent to 12... 21 Pitts Road. Saw nothing but numbers. To from R6 to R3. This is the first reading of this proposed zoning ordinance amendment to rezone this property. Um, Mr. Tucker, because you sit on the Planning Commission, would you like to uh, give us an update on this? Thank you, Brian. I'd be glad to. Um, thank you for whoever sent the picture around. If you all have that, that would be the best. Um, aid in understanding the explanation. This is actually the second time this exact type of request has been before us. If you go back a few years in time, we got roughly 40 acres back, uh, back taxes that we actually were talking about donating to the Nature Conservancy at one point in time. Um, we ended up putting it in the auction, and it was sold Mr. Doyle, who's the applicant here. Oh, I forgot my disclaimer. I did this at the Planning Commission. The applicant is my son's father-in-law, which means he's nothing to me. I don't see him here tonight. I, he was no, at was the Planning say, Commission. Yeah. yeah, But I, I, I don't have any interest in this. I just I think I brought it up the last time it was here mm -hmm. to make everybody aware of it. But I, I know more about this because of that. That's true. Uh, we went, we auctioned this piece. My son's father-in-law, Mr. Doyle, was the purchaser at it. What has going, gone on in the past, the first time it was here, the um, neighbors, and now their name is going to escape me, um, but the, on where you see 1221 Pets mm -hmm. Road, they oh. actually own a house on Pets. And where the address is typed on the picture here, the first time this came through was a request to rezone that piece from R6 to R3 so that it could be attached to the lot that was in line with these other lots that you see along Pets Road there. So essentially, um, they were expanding their backyard by buying some of the land. Mm -hmm. Mr. Doyle got at the auction. They were buying some of that <coughs> from Mr. Doyle to expand their backyard. Mm -hmm. In order to add it to the existing piece, the zoning classifications have to match. R6 is actually a more dense zoning designation than R3, so it was back zoned, if you will. And I want to say it's five acres. I don't know the exact math on it before. So that one, and they needed a variance for length of width. There was a number of things that had to happen, but in effect, the piece that's marked on the sheet that you see as one, two, two, one pets, that was the first round. They've now come back to Mr. Doyle and they've asked to buy more from him. And again, it's about five acres. And that's where all those squiggles are that, um, that you see in the corner there. And it's exactly the same scenario. Um, it needs to be rezoned so it can be added to the now first five acres and the lot. Um, they'll probably, I don't know if they'll need to do another variance again or not, but it needs to be rezoned from R6 to R3 uh, so it can be added uh, to the existing five plus the house. 
the um, matter came before the Planning Commission. I think it was a unanimous recommendation for approval. We did have a number of participants from Crystal Point uh, condos were there and asked some questions. I think I see some faces here from there as well. Um, I'm not sure they understood exactly where the piece was. A lot of their questions centered. There's a road that comes off the back end of that subdivision, which was a years ago scheduled for extremely high density development. It's now just basically four parcels that are back there. So anyway, this is round two of something we've already done before. Mr. Doyle's is basically selling more to, why do I want to say Florida? Is that the right? Yeah, Dave uh, Florida. Florida. Dave Florida. Is that the right name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his wife was at the planning commission and there she is over there. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and as she said succinctly, after we went through all the questioning last year, we just want to make our backyard bigger. I think that's how she would describe this, uh, uh, the, this particular um, application. So that's all that is, is they want to make, they're not going to be adding any homes on it no, or anything? No, just, just backyard. I mean, you, you, maybe down the road, somebody could maybe do that, I don't know, but you'd have to take roads back there and subdivide and do all the kind of stuff. A lot of that. You do that now though with R6, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and mm -hmm. with yeah. much more intensity with R6. So. It's, more, it's, it's a more restrictive rezoning than what they're asking for. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And, the, and they would enter it from Pets Road. All right. Is there any board discussion, any other board discussion in regards to this? If not, is there any, the public, would, is anybody like to come up and, and talk in regards to this? Yes, you can come right up to the podium, ma'am. <coughs> Then I can I have you pull the microphone down and talk into it a little bit? There you go. Like uh, the voice. <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, Lynn Fenner, I live in Crystal Point, and uh, I do have some concerns. I wasn't able to come last Thursday to be part of the main conversation on this. Um, I just wondered, other than <coughs> enlarging your backyard, uh, do you have any other uses planned for that property? Because it is a wetlands. <laughs> Regardless of anybody saying it's just a swamp, the DEQ does list it as a wetlands mm -hmm. property. I show, I see it on the maps. Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Yeah, for us, the whole reason why we wanted the property back I did not want condos put up back there. We're buying it, so it won't get developed. That's okay. my personal problem. Well, of course, when Crystal Point was first developed by Paradigm Builder, um, he had plans, and I'm surprised that the township actually approved trying to put condos back in there beside the wetlands where she's talking about, right off of Pets Road there. In fact, the, the way to get back there would have been through uh, Lot 50's driveway, basically. <laughs> so I understand your point, not wanting condos back there, and of course we never wanted them there either. Um, the problem or concern that we have or some of us have, because we're adjacent right to the wetlands, is that the wetlands stay preserved in the best way possible. Um, I'm, I, I was kind of shocked that the wetlands could be purchased, if you know what I'm saying. Now they're you they're you, actually what purchasing. What did you say, Lynn? You don't know that wetlands can be purchased? Is that what you said? She's surprised. That I'm, I'm surprised they oh, can be. No, because, it, it can be. Okay, then you have the five acres that they bought a year ago, right? And now they want to buy five more acres 
and it's basically all wetlands that they're buying. Um, so we're concerned that the wildlife ecosystem there stays the way it should be staying. Well, and wetlands is protected by the DEQ. And what she's saying now, I wasn't at the other meeting or anything, but they purchased five. <coughs> they want to add five more just so it won't allow building behind them. Any home. building back there. That's right. In order to build, they'd have to do some filling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can't, well, you can't fill In order the to build, they need permission for any type of a movement of any wetlands at all from the DEQ. Uh -huh. What's okay. going on, though, the way it's owned now, they can do that and build now. They're actually asking for a more restrictive zoning than is allowed now. So, I mean, if they wanted to at this moment, they could get permission from the DEQ and, and do And these start things. building. Correct. But she's saying that was the purpose that they decided well, to I, buy I mean, it. Whether that's her purpose or not, that, that's allowed as long as the DEQ gives her blessing the way it's zoned now. But they're mm -hmm. actually asking for us to kind of pull back the reins on it and, and, and create more of a restriction okay 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 I see what you're saying okay. mm -hmm. I didn't understand that part of the zoning part um, uh, I also have a question regarding the same property um, is there a township ordinance on a gun firing range <laughs> we've heard guns fired in that direction <coughs> in the direction you are of probably, 1221 Pets. Lynn, you are really probably hearing Lake Fenton Sportsman Club. No, I'm not. I know I'm not. All right, then. I'm then out then. in the backyard. I legal. can hear it's, oh, if gunshots. It's, I'm going to let the gentleman talk to you in regards, Mr. Crew, in regards to open <coughs> hunting, and he can tell you then if a person has property and it's within a certain area and, and the size of it, they can hunt on their own okay. property. Yeah. So, so they can actually have a firing range because they own more than a lot like we own. You're in allowed Crystal to target Point. practice on your own property. In Crystal Point, we have I, I 30 feet set I'm back from our Michigan yard. Law. <coughs> your association may say something different, but as far as Michigan law, you're allowed to. Mm -hmm. Okay. They are totally allowed to do target practice back there. Here, let, let's let her finish and then. Okay. Do you have anything <coughs> those, else? Those Lynn? were my questions. Uh, what it was going to be used for uh, in the wetlands protection. But if they, I'm, I'm understanding that they can hunt on their own property. And I'm not against hunting, and I totally understand that. But I was just curious about the firing range and, and the amount of shooting that we hear that close and if, I know it's not the gun range over off of Butcher Road. If you feel that it's wrong or they are violating the best thing to do is contact the DNR. Mm -hmm. They will come out and establish the safety limits uh, and that might help reassure your concerns. Okay. So it's not a situation that we actually should be talking about here. If something occurs, it would be between us, the neighborhood, or neighbors, and that parcel owner and the DNR. Well, we, we as a, the township cannot make rules that are stronger than the state and right now, okay. <coughs> pardon me, the state DNR covers distances. We've had issues that the DNR has addressed for the township most recently with uh, waterfall hunting. They were within the state established uh -huh. uh, distances from mm -hmm. a, an occupied home. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the know. start of the process. Um, I've already researched the safety distances uh, because on their said property that they initially bought, they do have 
a deer feeder, and I know that's not an issue, but if there's a deer feeder within 150 yards, mm -hmm. and it looks pretty close to us, <laughs> then once you're fish? attracting deer, you possibly could be shooting at them there and oh, shooting yeah. in our direction. You know, an easy way to, to do that, and you can get on Google Maps. Mm-hmm. And there's a... Um, there would be like a range finder there? There is. It's a little ruler. It's somewhere on there. I mean, I do it quite a bit. And you can actually go from the corner of your house or whoever's house to the deer feeder on the satellite. And uh -huh. it'll tell you exactly... How many... How many feet. Yeah. Feet, yards, 150 whatever. yards, 450 feet is the rule. So you're I correct. mean, you, you can tell uh, yards not better as, when you compare as, it to a football field. And that looks very you know, close well, to can, all of the properties. Uh -huh. Well, and that's that's the feed. I mean, that's that that's just the feeder. That, yeah, that, that, uh, that, I that, I don't know if there's a a, a blind there or not. Maybe somebody else does. But, but now, Lynn, but, not all people put deer feeders out to shoot the deer. In fact, a good hunter should not, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, we have property, and we put the deer. Oh, really? Oh no, seriously. <laughs> we put the deer, the feeders out there for the deer for our grandchildren, and and things like that. But yeah, I do not believe in putting the apples and the carrots and the sweet potatoes down and then shoot the deer. But don't ever say, I mean, in my eyes, not all people shoot deer if they're feeding them. Of course, I know that. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Uh, Ma'am, you want to come up, please? Yeah, you all you do that. <laughs> I don't do it. No, I know we'll get the Zoom going here. Zoom, on, zoom it on in. <laughs> Hi, I'm Teresa Montana. Can you hear me? Uh, no. Not no? Enough. I don't know if it's even on. No, I can hear it. I can hear it. You just, can? Just pull it a little closer to you. You're, you're tiny. Yeah. I'm Teresa Montana. Oh, I can hear me now. Yeah. I uh, live on Crystal Point as well. My address is 1215 Crystal Point Circle. And my property also backs up to this area that we're talking about. And maybe you answered my question already about contacting the DNR about the feeder and the blind. There has been a blind there. And it's flattened or down now. But um, I moved in in November, and that was one of the first things we noticed. And it seemed to be quite close to our yard, but like you said, I should contact the DNR to see, see about that and how close it actually is. And the second thing, and this may be just hearsay with the neighbors talking, but I've heard also there were plans to put in on that property a dirt bike uh, track. We've not had anyone even approach us in regards to that. No, okay. Well, I, that's now just been hearsay. I don't know where it came else. from, but it would be right in my backyard, and yep. it would be horrible. Yep. Be, being wetlands there, that probably couldn't happen is my hope. I can't say it can happen. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah. Yeah, we can. No one has applied for it, or we've had not. We haven't had any complaints saying there is one. Yeah, there's not one there now. This no. is like I said, hearsay may, maybe, but through the neighborhood, I've heard that. And um, I guess um, I just want wanted those sure. two things brought to light. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else, ma'am? Do you wanna do you wanna speak, Miss, Mrs. Florida? Do you? Want, no. All right, Lynn, go ahead. if you would like to come up one more time. I know she well, hits. One more question for that. Okay, go ahead. Um, would the township have to approve such a track? No. Only the DS DEQ, this wetland? Uh, not necessarily. Well, they the wetland, the DEQ is not involved. I'm sorry? They're riding their dirt bikes around the wetland, not no, disturbing it's, the wetland? No, it's their property is the wetland. The but they're, wetland? Not have, they're not doing it now. No, they're not. No. But See, I that's think. assuming. Yeah, they can't do you, anything you know, in wetlands without being our approval. Yeah. Or DEQ. <coughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty... Pretty strict. Very, very strict, Lynn. I, I don't know if it'll help you. I've known Mr. Florida. <laughs> longer than he probably wants to admit. I will talk to Mr. Florida tomorrow 
and make sure he is addressing your concerns and the laws? Yeah. I mean, you can assume it, but sometimes it never happens. Sometimes it can. But there's, we still have restrictions on dirt bikes and things like that. But any time the wetlands, it's the, um, the DNR. Absolutely. And they're very strict. All right. Is there any other board comments? Any other public comments in regards to this? Now, we will not vote on this tonight. The second, re re the second reading of this ordinance will be on June 6th meeting. Unfinished business, none. PEG, grant application. The FAC, consortium. Linden, Fenton, and Lake Fenton Schools. Operation Manager Tom Broker, would you like to discuss this because Tom sits on that board for the PEG grant money? Yes, in the packet is the entire application. It's a, it's a combined application of the three school districts plus a small amount from the consortium to actually uh, obtain some additional equipment for the, the PEG channel. Um, there's a breakdown from each school district of what they're purchasing. Um, for those of you who don't already know it, Randon, the gentleman who records our meetings for us from the back room, is now the PEG coordinator for the consortium and is working with all of the schools. He worked with all of them on their orders, uh, helped them come up with some cost-saving ideas, and also, for the first time, I think, ever, the grant application equipment list was geared toward enabling them to uh, increase the amount of video production output for the PEG channel, which is really what it's all about. So uh, I know the consortium was very pleased with, uh, um, with the approach taken on the application. Uh, the funds are laid out there. Uh, the, the, the summary, I think, is the last page. Shows the um, shows how we break out the cost among the communities and it's based on our annual PEG fee revenues. Um, so our share is about 42 and a quarter percent. Uh, the total applications a little over 180,000. Our share is 76,285.46. Um, that is an up to amount. Every time they've ordered equipment in the past, by the time they get it ordered in the end, the costs have gone down. Uh, so we won't fund it until they actually get the money or actually, excuse me, get the equipment, the schools will pay for it and then invoice the municipalities for their respective shares. Uh, and it's worked, that worked real well in the last round of grants. Um, and for point of reference, that this represents only about a sixth of, of the reserves we have um, in, in the PEG fund balance. So we're, we're not depleting the money. Tell them where we get the money from. Um, the PEG fees is a 2% surcharge um, from the cable companies. In our case, that's Charter and AT&T. 2% uh, of their gross revenues is paid into this. They are restricted funds that cannot be used for anything other than supporting capital purchases, supporting uh, PEG programming and PEG channel. So it's not money we can use on roads or anything else. It's, it's restricted funds. And we've updated our TV um, program quite a bit with our pig money. We have, and we're about due for a few more improvements. Mm -hmm. What I can't understand <clears throat> is, and I have asked the city of Fenton, why they don't go into televising their meetings like this. And this is how we got this to happen, is through our pig money. Actually, I think Lyndon is considering doing that. They really they? should. I think it helps the residents. Is there any other board discussion? Yes, yes Sean. Is there anyone here to, from? Not uh, to my knowledge, no. Okay. Um, I, I oh, said, yes, the young man. I, I don't know if he'd be the one to answer or the schools no. would be. But number one, I would like to know <laughs> how much the existing equipment we still have at the, in the consortium because I've heard things are walking away. They have, a couple of years ago, they implemented an inventory system, and I, it's my understanding everything is accounted for at each school. And there are a few other things I would like them to answer before we go that far. I'm seeing on here a GoPro, two of them. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the GoPro. It's about that big. Mm -hmm. I just know how fast that could leave in someone's pocket. And I'm just wondering, I'd like to hear a 
Maybe that's just some checks and balances they have in place to keep I think he's coming to help you. I can answer your question. Super. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a pretty See, good trick. See, it goes to show you're paying attention. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, yeah, so you were talking about the GoPro? Well, I'm not just the GoPro. I'm just wondering, basically, how you guys keep track of all this expensive equipment. Um, from what I've looked at, and I've visited with all the schools, um, they've kept pretty good track of all their equipment. It all gets locked up. And surprisingly, the really small stuff, like the GoPros and the small camcorders, none of it's gone missing. So they've kept track of it. We do have a lot of old stuff that's built up that we're working on getting rid of. But as far as I can tell, the kids aren't walking away with it. Gotcha. Can, they, can they sell it old stuff then? Is it sellable stuff or is it just so outdated that it really needs to be uh, That's something the consortium is working on. Right. Anything that can be sold, the money would have to go back in the pot for future pur purchases. So it would come back to the consortium and could be used against the next purchase because we can't take the money back and use it for anything else. If, 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 if it's sellable, if there's any real value to it. In, in a lot of cases, I think a lot of it's just going to be recycled electronics. But in some cases, if it's something that can be sold, and it's a policy the group is working on right now. You have some more, Sean? Well, I'm trying to think. I'm, I, I'm trying to think how to word this, and I'm having a little trouble with it. But it's funny we had Southern Lakes Park and Rec here tonight, and we're we're allocating money to the schools, who over the last couple of years have increased their usage fees to Southern Lakes. But yeah, they keep coming to the township, so the residents. I guess the way I want to put this: the residents are getting fleeced either way. They're paying. Or getting double dipped, I guess. I'm trying to put a figure a way to put that. I think you did. Into, into um, <laughs> the right terms. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little frustrated because we're, we're talking, if, if I was to hold these funds up, they'd say you're against kids, but yet the same group on these school boards can sit there and raise the rates to these young men and women to use the facility. So Southern Lakes has to pass that on to them and increase the cost. So okay. I just, like I said, I'm trying to articulate my thoughts enough to put this in order and I'm not doing it and I wish we had some people from the school boards here to ask questions that it, it, they want to open checkbook from us without anyone really here representing them to tell us or answer the questions. Maybe this have. is what we should have. Um, Tom, is there a deadline on this approval of this amount? They want to get the orders placed before school ends. Um, and if we wait one more meeting, we are getting dangerously close to the end of the school year. But he'll get um, his answers. I, I don't think it's anything. I, you know, I don't want to hold it up. I'm just, I think as a board, we have a responsibility. And Bob and I, I think, have brought this, or have, we've been trying to bring this to the attention of our board. The fact is that the schools kind of operate by their own rules in certain aspects and as township officials we have a responsibility to protect our residents sometimes when they're being absolutely uh, taken advantage of and I think there's an opportunity maybe with it to get the school board's attention and tell them that we are not happy with certain things that at these schools that are, that are taking place because under the original agreement with Southern Lakes the schools were supposed to provide the space at no cost now, they don't call it rent, but they do call it a usage fee for the rooms. Hmm. And the cost of these programs keep going up, and it's to the point we, that Southern Lakes has had to get rid of its scholarship <coughs> program because they don't have the funds to provide it because you're paying it in usage fees because we can't call it what it really is, rent. Well, that's why usage fees are way different than rent. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. <laughs> do, do no, we have not. numbers for this, Sean? I mean, are there, do we have, uh, because it's a I point I can bring up. 39, well, I know last year alone we paid, Bob, was it $23,000 to Fenton Schools for the use of the pool? Yep. Yeah, it was 39000 But it wasn't rent. It was for, for taxpayer, taxpayers who are already paying taxes, and when you speak with high up officials, they don't believe that the residents have the right to use the facilities without paying for them? I, I think this is a time that we could have a real, not, nothing you, don't get me wrong, it's just the fact is, 
an <laughs> honest conversation because Southern Lakes is not in the position because they operate out of these schools to really say no. What do they do? Do they shut the swim program down and kids don't swim now? Kids don't learn how to swim? So we as a board finally have a chance to say, hey, let's have a talk that they can't have. We've got time. So We've got I, time. I would like to you see want that, to? I would like to see that happen. Too bad Vince left. These are the hard questions we were kidding about. <laughs> Sean and I have both argued the point that you should rent whatever name you want to give it. It's hard for me to believe when the schools are built on tax dollars, Southern Lakes is run on tax dollars. So in my mind, it belongs to the people, then why do they have to pay an additional fee on whatever class they sign up to use what technically, or maybe not technically, what is their property because they paid for the schools and they're paying for Southern Lakes to function. Wow. I agree with both of you 100%. I, and I wouldn't mind waiting. My question would be, I think we do. does the school, is there expenses that occur that would not normally occur? For instance, the pool. Are they required, the school district required to have a, a, a lifeguard on duty they, or they, something like they, that? They have to have staff because custodian staff or this and that mm -hmm. there. And that's part of it. And the lights supposedly are flickering on and when the lights are turned on in the classroom and those are the costs supposedly they're passing on. Well, a good example, Vince, to answer your question is as you know, we have a rescue unit of firemen. They are certified just below Navy SEALs as far as swimming. They had to be recertified for the distance. There's a thousand yards or something like that. And I'd be dead in some time in between. And we wanted to use their pool. And they said we could use their pool, but we had to pay for a lifeguard to watch our certified Sci divers Sci swim in the pool. God. Yeah, you got the same look we had. Yeah. <laughs> but again, is that a, again something that the state's requiring so who, who, of the schools? Who the lifeguard going to call? They going to call the dive team if they have trouble? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean no, I, I, we we can't. I, I didn't know we were going there. To I, I, we had, we, had we can't get board, answers. Or the school wanted, I kind of went there. I apologize. But I'm just, no, but mm -hmm. this is good. I just don't. But I don't believe this equipment falls into the same category. Well, that's what I'm wondering if we're getting Southern Lakes well, stuff we're getting, washing over into this. Yeah. Into this well, I think what Sean's point is, is would it be the opportunity to bring them in? and Our residents of a high, high, is. We pay Fent Township taxpayers, pay the majority of Southern Lake yes. cost. Oh, yeah, I get the number okay. up there. I was oh, like, I, I agree 60%. with that. Uh, okay, so I, I think we're doing a disservice because when our little, the young people go to sign up for the dance class over here, and they've had to increase the cost of the dance class because guess what? They got to pay a usage fee. I don't think that's right or fair. I'm sorry. They act like, you know, it's funny, they act like it's theirs when you ask for something. But they act like it's yours when there's cost to be paid on it. And I'm, and I'm very I'm very tired of that. And I've seen it from all three school districts. And I've sat on Southern Lakes Board now for three and a half years and dealt with the school districts. And they all have the same. Well, I think it goes farther than that. I mean, I've been paying for years for what I call old man basketball uh, in the Grand Lake District. <laughs> and one, several of our guys had the same argument. Look, yes, we're so. residents of Grand Lake. We pay taxes of it. Why do I have to pay to come rent the gym? But look, look at it this way. I agree with what we said about that. But when you look at the PEG grants and what it's used for and can only be, be used, used for, for I, I don't think this is the time to make a stand because I know a lot of the students 
utilize this actually in some instances some to classes. establish your career, going to college. Mm -hmm. and Even if we didn't give them it, we can't spend it on anything but the schools. Right. And the money is coming from, what is it, one or two percent of the profit from the cable company. Not what we pay. No. Because that would fall right in line with the other. Well, I but think, this is off their profit. I would I would agree with that, but I think Sean's point is that somehow we've got to figure out how to address the, the underlying issue. I mean, this is just kind of a tangential tie-in, if you will. You know, and I don't know what the legal limits are. Uh, good thing we got a new township lawyer here. We can put him to work <laughs> on that kind of stuff. Let's see. Well, can I ask you a question, Sean? Maybe you guys could know the numbers because I try to do the, <coughs> number, the the math in my head, and forgive me, I might be off, but. The revenue is being between 720, and he said 760,000. And you divide it by the 5,089, I think it was, that participate. That's 150, some almost 160 dollars for a class. Well, is that, have, am I doing the math wrong? You, you no, have some programs that are very like very uh, the volleyball, the UU, uh, AAU, AAU volleyball. That can be 300 to 500 dollars because they're traveling, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the okay. Tiger Shark swim program is different than the swim program. That is a, uh, a competitive swim. Program. So just the thirty-nine thousand dollars is what we're talking about. Is so what the school, you know, the schools are charging to to use the facilities. And don't wrong, if they if they, I understand they're having to have staff, janitorial staff there. But if they if they are there, so kid going and using the classroom or seniors walking the halls of, you know, uh -huh. the school. To get exercise and they want to charge for that I, th I just think it's a travesty and the fact is if the schools can't eat that little bit c with their large budgets compared to southern lake small budget I, that's what i have problem with. this may not be the point but i don't know when we're going to get a place to get their attention and so what board are you saying that we we need to get with the school board the school board the school board uh, board uh, and and we're let's very, do we're let's very do blessed it that we our township encompasses linden Lake Fenton all three, and Fenton. Fenton, all three that are part of this group. And I think we're one of the few that Fenton can't really make a stand and deal with Linden schools. It's not going to happen because they don't have any right. jurisdiction in there, basically. So I, I, maybe it's not now, but I, I've just seen it, and I keep seeing the cost raised for Southern Lakes programs. I see the scholarship program that's gone Going away. Down. And thirty six or thirty nine thousand or whatever it is doesn't seem like a lot, but it would help Southern Lake get a building. Okay, but the schools want space. It's a few years ago, Southern Lakes used to have space, a, a bit more space over at Lake Fenton, but because of the size yes. of that, they've asked them to move out. So now all they have over there is a dance studio. You know, it's. I just think our residents deserve us to give it a shot. All right, now, when do you have the two of you? When do you have your Southern Lakes meeting? When does that come up? It'll be the fourth Thursday of every month. So it'll be next Thursday. Yeah, be. next Thursday. 27th, I believe. 27th. That's we, 6 o'clock community center. After Memorial Day? Is that what we're looking at? No, that would no, be it's, 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 it's Friday. I'm sorry, it's 26th at 6 o'clock. And if, and if no one on this, the board is that upset by it and they think it's fair, then, I, then, I, then I'm way off. Then it shouldn't no, be an it's, issue. No, it's... we're both off then. It, it, 27th you know, at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Where now? County? I mean, a uh, city? Uh, the community center. Community center. Community center. Community center. Community center. How many can make a commitment tonight that you could be there? I'll be there. I be there? Be there well, the, the, the whole thing what, what in... What can do, I mean, and we probably well, we'll show. We can ask them the questions then, well, because the, the we have two people. Yeah, Pardon me. Be that's that's, that's Southern Lakes. Lakes. That's so that's not going to be. Well, we got to do the school board. Is where we got to do. Somebody's got to ask the question. Case in point, we have a very good contract for next year based on what we're doing presently with the Lake Fenton schools. And we shocked the other people because of the position Sean and I had talked about that when it was called, it passed four to two. Well, guess who the two no votes were? 
even though we strongly support all the schools. We're trying to send a message and Here's the it's absurd. not making the mailbox. I Here's guess. the absurdity of it. Snow removal at Fenton schools. Mm -hmm. They're going to remove the snow no matter what. Because, but because Southern Lakes needs it moved up a day or two, maybe, compared to what they normally would do it on a weekend, let's say, they're supposed to pay that whole bill. They're going to remove that snow anyways two days later or a day later. Now, if they're having their own event there, they'll clear it without a problem. But if it's anything additional for Southern Lakes, there's a fee. And, and what bothers me is it's taxpayers' money either way. Well, then don't you think we should go to this Southern Lakes meeting at least and have them give us some answers too? Well, and well, the board's not getting, you know, they're the school board's not there. They're, they're the school board's not there, and they're, they're just trying to keep Southern Lakes alive because truthfully, if everyone on that board would have voted no, Southern Lakes wouldn't have a place to operate because if you said no on the Fenton contract, truthfully, guess what? There's no pool. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no space. No, that's they can, right. And they have they have them over, you know, pardon the lame expression, but over a barrel. What what are they gonna do? And that's why they can't really do anything. They're trying to keep it going. And the kids need this, the kids the kids and the community needs this. And if Southern Lakes was dissolved, Losey Center's another one without money coming in. They benefit from that. I think it's gonna be seventy eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars this year they're gonna benefit over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Who's going to take up? Who's going to take this up? They can't because can you imagine the backlash if the school wants to come after them and, I, and they might for what I'm doing here tonight? I don't know. But the fact is, is somebody in this community, and I think we are the board to do it because I think we stand up for for things that for our residents. I think, and I think the time is now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if and if I'm off, just tell me, guys, and I'll. No, I think it's good you brought it to our attention. Well, we knew when we voted against the contract it was going to be 4-2. It was more symbolic than, and believe you or not, nobody asked us why we voted no. <laughs> it was like, okay, passes 4-2. <clears throat> All right, because we'll have to. Because afraid of the answer, Sean, or I might give them. Well, Tom, I get one more question, but it has to do with um, the equipment. Why is it important that we do it before the school year ends? I mean, technology-wise, I mean, three months is almost a whole generation of an Apple iPhone, so why would we need to do that now? Why wouldn't we wait until the fall when school started? Because These they're the products that are no, easily accessible. It's because of the time it takes to get everything. If they order it now, order. they can have it in time for the start of the school year in the fall. If if we don't, if they don't order it till September, they won't have it till after the first of the year. Right. At some point during the summer, we'll have to go in and actually install that equipment, and then make sure everything works. And I'll be helping them familiarize with the newer technology and all that. If we started as soon as the school year started, the students might not be able to use that equipment till maybe a couple months into the. I looked at about eighty percent of the equipment and stuff that really is not stuff that would he take just, two or three days to get. They you're just talking hired about him camcorders, just, right, GoPros, things this. like that. So a lot of that stuff, yeah, if you want to look at that, but then there's, well, you have... 80% of what you're spending. Mm -hmm, but then you have the larger items that are going to take install time. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I mean... And also technology costs a lot less than every 90 days, too. I mean, I'm just looking at why not buy the stuff now that you <coughs> need to get ready for the fall and order the stuff. Because a GoPro could go down there make dollars. Sure. And that's very true. So that's just that's the reason why I was asking. Because I I mean, yeah. when the, the needs, court, I mean, it's easy to spend seventy thousand dollars when it's not your seventy thousand dollars. To me, if it was my company, I can guarantee I wouldn't be buying GoPros right now to put in in September. The consortium has established mm -hmm. April as the time frame to yep. submit the applications. Mm -hmm. So if if there's to be a change there, then the consortium would have to alter its its uh, operating rules. But the, and although the timing is based on getting the order ready and placed before the teachers are gone for most of the summer, that way they'll have the benefit of <coughs> using the equipment at the start of the school year rather than partway through. Where's the equipment stored? Uh, the schools uh, hold their own equipment, and they've got 
like a lot of the smaller items will get stored in lock boxes at the end of the night, and then they have systems for checking so the stuff, stuff that's out. ordered now that would arrive like in a week would be stored somewhere. I, yeah, they would get shipped the to the schools, and I'm sure it would be taken care of and stored properly. <coughs> All right. Any other questions? I'm going to get back to that PEG grant application. Um, Thank you. Any Thanks. other board discussion in regards to it? <coughs> I, a motion is a motion is in order to approve funding for the PEG grant applications of Lake Fenton Community Schools, Fenton Area Public Schools, Linden Community Schools, and the FAC Consortium up to a total of 76000 2546 mm -hmm. as presented like mr. Krug said it is not our money and it does go back to the schools do I have a motion so moved. <coughs> excuse me excuse me any for thank you any further discussion roll call please Mathis yes Kessler yes I vote yes Gopal yes Tucker yes Lorraine yes shoemaker no. <coughs> motion passes. Okay. <clears throat> board comments. Are there any other comments from the members of the board? All right. I'm going to open it up to um, public comments on agenda and agenda, non-agenda items. But after, I'm going to have to put a limit to the time tonight because we've got to go into executive session and... Um, so, well, why don't we say till 9 o'clock? That'll give you enough time, I believe, in regards to your concerns. So would you please come up and um, get to give us your name and your concerns? My name's Terry Garfield, and uh, my concern is when we first talked to you about uh, the situation at the trailer park, we really were had high hopes that we would get that at least the main street cleaned up the debris the the blight between the trailers uh, the snow the things that should be stored in the lot the boats the snowmobile uh, the snowmobile trailers those things um, there, there was a frenzy for the first couple of weeks that everybody was aware of to get things cleaned up I think they took everything that they cleaned up and put it inside and now they brought it back outside and added more possessions to it. So it's, it's, there's not as much trash. They've been paying more attention to their, you know, not littering the neighbor's property. But is it really not possible to at least get that cleaned up so that it, it's cleaned up? I mean, there, it's not out of line from the mobile home park ordinance. Um, Tom, Mr. Holsey has been going out there, and he, it's, it's continuous yeah. in regards to what he does. I don't have his report with me right now. But there is so much that we can do, and you know that, and Mr. Graves told you that, and Mr. Horn, and then even the sheriff. So they are, Mr. Holsey is working on it, Mr. Garfield. Mr. Holsey is not. And I wasn't, I didn't want to do this to Mr. Hosey tonight, but I'm not going to let you do that to me. All right. right. Mr. Hosey was at our house, and he told me that he wasn't even, he didn't think that the snowmobiles and boats and stuff, there was even an ordinance. So I, I gave him the ordinance number, and I offered to provide him with a copy, and he said he could get a copy here. He told me that when we first started this, we jammed him up for two weeks and put him way behind on his other work, and he didn't have time to do this. And you know he what? wasn't. I'm going to stop you right now. Huh. It's all it's all right to attack a person, but that person should be standing here when you are attacking. Okay, You're I'll wait let a minute, me back Mr. off Garfield. on that. You are telling me that Mr. Hosey said this and that. I will tell you. I will have Mr. Hosey here next week, and then you can confront him. Mm. But I mean, not next week, in two weeks. And you can confront him with these questions. Okay. And then it's a fair debate. Okay. So let's do it that way. Okay. Well, I won't bring Mr. Hosey into the next part of this, but I will tell you that 
you made a statement early on that you it wasn't going to get done unless we were willing to sign the um, things. We'll sign them this week and bring them to that meeting. Perfect. I'm sorry. We don't want to bring them to the meeting. We want to mail them, registered mail, with a return receipt. You want to... I want, we're going to mail them to you sure. with a return receipt so we're building a case because there were some other things said that I'm not going to bring up right now because he's not here to defend no, himself. You, you, if you're going to accuse somebody, you need to... No, no, to I was just them. telling you the and conversation I'll, I'll that we had. I'll definitely have him here so he can answer your questions. Absolutely. If you want to send them to my attention... Okay, well, I let's will. forget about that. What about cl cleaning it up? He, he's got the answer to that, right? It's been six weeks. If, Mr. Can, we, can Mr. we count on six more and maybe get some action? Mr. Garfield, there is, and you're going to say no, there is limits. We are doing what we can do. We have been out there. I don't, I agree with what you're saying to a point. You want the whole thing cleaned up and it wouldn't look like what it looks like. And that's going to be almost impossible. So we are working on it and we're doing what we can do. And that's all I can say. The police are working on what they have to do. And we have been in there in the evenings and have done some arrests and different things. So it isn't that nothing is being done. Maybe not to your desire, but we are definitely trying to do it. Is there anyone else? <coughs> My name is Al Wilson. Mm -hmm. uh, a month ago, I wasn't here for the last meeting, but uh, I, met, I brought up the fact of the school buses, and it was brought up through a lot of other people, uh, stopping at the trailer park, picking up students. And I said that they can go to the end of Eastview Drive without having to stop at that school bus, or stop that school bus at that trailer park. And a month ago, you said you were going to talk to the school All right, board. I'm going to give you an answer right now. Plus, Mr. Crew, both of us took your question, and without talking to each other, Mr. Crew went to the Board of Education. I went to <coughs> the company, the bus company, and walked into the bus, bus garage and talked to a lady named Melissa Huff. I'm going to let you talk to Mr. Krug first, and then I can give you my answer. Well, I was just going to say what Mrs. Mathis did. I had an election there the next day, talked to the superintendent, and told him my concern. He knew nothing of it. <clears throat> And uh, according to the superintendent, Wayne Wright, that the bus stop will not be there next year. And as Mrs. Mathis, it was after my conversation with Mr. Wright, I was talking to Bonnie, and she said, well, I've already talked to the bus garage. And I can tell you what, I went in there and I said, we have a problem. We have people that are concerned about the, um, the location of the bus stop. Can it be changed? This young lady um, got on the computer and, and realized how many children are on that bus stop. But she said, or are supposed to be on the bus stop, but most children are driven to the school. I said, can you change this location? She said, yes. And she was going on vacation for three weeks. Now, as of last week, I did not go to the bus stop to find out because I've got to go to the other lady. But they said, yes, we would be able to. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to place, change that before the end of this summer. Um, then I also asked, I said, why do you not drive your bus all the way down? The words from Melissa Huffs was, we, the reason why we don't drive it down is we used to have a place that we could back into a vacant lot, and we don't have that anymore. That was, that so, was probably halfway down. Yeah. That was uh, Dezito's. So that was what um, she told me. And so 
the way they're doing it is fine. They're not going to take it down to the end of the road. The other, when you come down Tory, um, it's Tory Beach, mm -hmm. Eastview on the right, which is the north, south side is Eastview going down by Frank's. I asked her about that. That is absolutely um, City of Fenton right, bus. Right, right. It is not our, our bus. I, I, and I, I understand that. And so that matter has been addressed, and we'll just have to see if they will do it for us in, in two different ways. Yeah, it was just, you know, we were talking about the, the drug trailer and getting the kids away from that area as much as we could. I mean, that's, uh, it's, I don't have any kids in school anymore. Uh, just looking out for the kids that are there. So, and one more thing is about the uh, the guy that owns the 53 acres. I see not much has been done. He's, he hasn't repaired his fence. He's got trees leaning over his fence, which is, is here and there, but uh, uh, I know that that area is still being used by the, the people, everyone, everyone but him. So I don't know if you've talked to their representatives to get that fixed or... I, well, see, I can't say Mr. Hosey said, because I just okay. told oh, Mr. Okay. Garfield well, I can't. I don't know either. So. But um, I have not talked to the man in okay. regards to that. That's it. Okay. Is there anyone else? Mr. Hallcroft. Dave Hawcroft, I'll try to keep it short tonight, just a couple of comments. Uh, this next meeting, I certainly hope that I don't forget. I certainly hope that I don't mess up. I certainly hope that I'm here because I would like to see that fellow here. You'd like to see I'm what? I'm behind you 120%. To, because that's been ongoing. That's been festering for years and years and years and years and years and the neighbors have to live with that crap forever and if you don't believe me ask mark okay so much for that i certainly hope i'm able to be here the other thing is last time when i was here i commented about panema drive and being in sorry shape and it has since been repaired. They came down with a truck. And they put a few spoons full of asphalt in and put another Band-Aid on top. Well, <coughs> that road needs heart surgery. It doesn't need another Band-Aid. It's got Band-Aids on top of Band-Aids on top of Band-Aids. And I think anyone that's been here on the board a length of time or lived in this area a length of time remembers back that that hasn't always been an asphalted road it used to be a gravel road and there have not always been drainage ditches down there through the problem area there now and there did used to be culverts but some of them were filled in yay so many years ago but you have to have a foundation underneath the road. That was a gravel road. I remember watching all kinds of heavy trucks get stuck in the spring when it was like jello. You walk on one step and it went down and you took your foot off and that came up, but the next step went down. And I brought in pictures. You folks that have been around a while have seen them. I took them standing on a tailgate of my truck before the ditches were put in, and I think probably between me raising cane with a county road commission and Bonnie raising cane with a county road commission, that finally the squeaking wheel might have gotten a little oil, but they did put in some ditches, and the road has been better, but you got to have a foundation to begin with. And I guess the nice way for me to say, oh, 
taking the pictures from the tailgate of my truck, I failed to include the fact that standing looking the one way, you could look across, and they're 50-foot lots, and I was able to scan six in the picture. So that's 100 yards of water across the road. And I did take pictures going the opposite way from the tailgate again to see it from a different angle. This was before the ditches were put in. Mm -hmm. We have puddles in the road now, but we do not have it flooded for 100 yards. So that's good, but nevertheless, you still have the lousy foundation. And they have spent, I would think, I'm not an accountant, and I don't know how long it's been going on. But since that road has been asphalted, it's been a good number of years. They have been out there putting Band-Aids on top of Band-Aids on top of Band-Aids at least every year, sometimes more than once a year. And I maintain that it's not up to me to tell them how to do their job, but what they spent in manpower and materials and trips and excuses and complaints on the phone from who knows how many people, they could have come in and repaired the road and not put just a Band-Aid on a heart pass bypass. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you, David. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Garfield, would you please? I think that I'm correct in saying that um, for this gentleman's problem and the problem on Torrey Beach also, it's not the road commission's fault. It has to be a special assessment district established by you people <clears throat> in order to fix those roads. So that is one of the issues that I also wanted to bring up. When can we expect that uh, that will be established for this gentleman and for Torrey Beach also? Because the Road Commission can't do much more than they've done with yeah, Torrey Beach. Don't. I'm going to let Mr. Go ahead, well, the Sean. The residents have to bring yeah. that to us with over 50% of the residents wanting that on a petition. I believe that's how it works. With yes. The yes. Yeah. Actually, Torrey Beach, we got estimates two years ago, created petitions, and the petition circulation process stopped very Well, quickly. part of the problem <laughs> is, <clears throat> now correct me if, if I'm wrong, but when I spoke with Bonnie about this uh, a considerable length of time ago, Bonnie told me that unless all of the people on Torrey Beach, 50% of the people on Torrey Beach 51. would agree, we couldn't even include the people on East View and whatever that other street is over the Landings Way. Well, the way it would work, yeah. the petition, because the improvement would only be on Torrey Beach, the petition would only need to contain signatures representing more than 50% of the frontage on Torrey Beach. Now, once those were submitted, and, and this is the way it was, it was drafted, the township board would establish the special assessment district to include not only those properties, but all properties mm -hmm. that have to use Torrey Beach, which would include all properties on Eastview Drive and Landings Way. Is that just your policy? Because I don't believe that's a road commission requirement. The road commission doesn't do the special assessment. Mm -hmm. We do. I understand that, but is that your policy that it has to be just Torrey Beach first? It's state law. Well, Pardon? state law. Talk to Mr. Daly. Mr. Daly doesn't have anything to do with, no. with the special assessment process. Just as of the past maybe five years. Right. They used a whole different statute than we use. When we repaved Crane Road and Lakeshore Drive six years ago. No, I'm talking about just the fact that what you're saying about, because those people on Torrey Beach the, will not sign the petition is my understanding, but the rest of us have to then how do we ever get a road? Uh, Mrs. Garfield, I can tell you why they won't sign it. There was a, a volunteer that was taking the petitions around, and she was walking door to door. And she got, so many people threatened her and told her to get off their property that she stopped. And nobody else has come up and saying, I will try it again, to go door to door of, to get 50, over 50% 50 of those people on Torrey Beach. 
and I can, I mean, I can have her call you if you want I, me to. I talked with her. I ran to her at a garage sale. Yeah. But, but my question is, what happens to the rest of us that have to travel down that street, but it's almost impassable at times? Can we make that all one assessment district? We would, yes. The only thing I can offer, if there's a reluctance on the part of the Torrey Beach residents to sign a petition, it, it is, is to maybe update the numbers and have an informational meeting and invite everyone, uh, Eastview, Lake Landings Way, and Torrey Beach, to explain the process. Because if, if they feel more comfortable that, okay, yeah, our, these 12 properties or how many ever there are on Torrey Beach aren't going to front. Yeah, there's not very the many. Yeah. Maybe 20. Yeah, I know it's not yeah. a big number, but when you when you but incorporate, you when I put the, the, the numbers in for Eastview and Landings Way, we were only looking at an annual assessment, including interest, of 300 to $320 per lot over a 10-year period. So it was, it was, it was not a, a, an exorbitant amount of money to get the road fixed because uh, the example I was, I was starting to give is when we, when we paved Lake, uh, Crane Road and Lakeshore, it started with a petition just from Crane Road. And it was expanded to include, to pave Lakeshore as well because they said, we'd like to have this too. And all the other streets, Crane Ridge, Crane Wood, uh, the Golden Shores, there's mm -hmm. several other streets, they didn't pay the same amount, but they paid into yeah. it. They paid maybe a half or a third, half I can't remember. A half of a share. So it, it made it a lot more feasible for everyone to afford the special assessment and, and get the road project done. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I would, oh, did you raise something? Well, I just want to ask that. So is that, what I'm hearing is if the 12 people on Torrey Beach never want to get their, never want to pay for that, everybody on Landings Way in Eastview is kind of, are, are, we, are they stuck? Well, the only way it could be done could then would condition. be initiate the special assessment by board resolution. The problem with that is uh, a number of uh, maybe 25% of the frontage of Torrey Beach could block it by, by petition then if, if we initiate the special assessment. So our policy has always been we initiate special assessments sure. by petition only. Right. Okay. And if, may, if an informational meeting would help uh, uh, meet help. the fears of, of the people on Torrey Beach, and convince them that yes, it's a project worth pursuing, and they would like well, to petition. Well, if you if you so you would advertise that meeting, and what if they don't show up? I'm, I'm I mean, I'd be surprised. If they did. Yeah. I'm offering it as a possibility. Well, I, I and I, I appreciate that, sir. I re I really appreciate that. I'm just I don't know how you know. I don't know that they'd even come. But would you do that then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can get. I need to get updated numbers from the road commission. Um, we can do it. At, at this at this point, yeah, w there's no way to be constructive this year anyway, so we can move. What about the community development block grant monies? Can you use that? No. Why? Potentially, it's been used before the, the for income, roads. Income. Potentially on a direct benefit basis, we don't get enough money to cover the cost of a paving project. Oh, well, I'm sure you don't for yeah. community development, but, but it could contribute. But we can use it on a direct benefit basis if individual property owners meet both the income and asset requirements of HUD, then uh, they could potentially have their assessment paid with community development block grant dollars if, if there's funds available. Okay. Mighty line right there is going to get the township and get spent. Is that is that anything to do with the road? That's that's a, that's, that's, a school school that's, that's a school district. That's a school district. It's, it's, it's all township. Because it's still township. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still township. Uh, uh, David, and then I'm going to have to close the meeting. I'll try to make it quick. Uh. The special assessment situation, I don't understand it completely or the politics behind it. But I do understand speaking up before, and I want to say it's been close to 10 years ago, and I ran into this special assessment deal. Same thing, some other people were speaking like I was. And so it had to be studied with an engineer and find out what was involved and what a cost was going to be and this, that, and the other. Well, as I spoke earlier, we're talking probably a hundred to two hundred yards of road 
that is the main problem. Now you got to understand, from North Road down to the far west end is a mile. So 200 yards out of a mile is not very much. Well, this special assessment that we got, myself and each neighbor was going to amount to about $8,000. However, let me tell you what the $8,000 was for. It was for redoing the whole road, which is a mile long. It was for curb and gutters for a mile of road. And it was taking down about 18 trees. Now, if a guy's got a headache, you don't perform open heart surgery on him. It just don't happen. And so the special assessment program there, there there's something between the way that happened and what, are I, what I understand is the problem. It's part of maintenance. It wasn't done right the first place and putting band-aids and band-aids on it uh, that's not the answer, that's maintenance, and our taxes pay for maintenance for Pete's sake, I mean, special assessment, okay, so we pay it, each one of us gets it on our taxes, maintenance, we get it on our road tax, I mean, we're paying for it, and we're not getting it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else? I'm going to have to close the meeting tonight because we're going to go into an executive session. So I will say the meeting is adjourned.